Good morning, Liberty. How are y'all? Are you good? Yeah? Good. Go ahead and take a seat. My name's Katie, and I'm really excited to welcome y'all to Combo. I hope you've had a great weekend and a wonderful Monday morning so far. I also am really, really excited to introduce to you two incredible women. Abby Long and Alexis Lambert are not only Liberty students, yeah, but they're also competing with 23 other women for the Miss Virginia 2017 crown. Yeah, it's really, really exciting. Now, these competitions do take place November 18th through the 20th. So if you would like more information about Miss Virginia competition, feel free to contact Dr. Dell Jones. His information's on the screen and he can definitely share that information with you. Now in just a moment, both these girls are gonna come up and share their stories throughout this journey to the crown, so please feel free to give it up for both Alex, Alexis and Abby. Hi everyone, I'm Alexis Lambert and I'm Miss Twin Cities USA, and so that's out of Bristol, Virginia, and like she said, I'll be competing in the Miss Virginia USA pageant. So I've been doing pageants since my senior year of high school, and I think we all have a calling, and my calling is just to be a servant for Christ. And so pageants have definitely given me that platform. And so my platform is Moving My Mountain, and that's from Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So I really believe that everyone has their own personal mountains, whether that be financial issues, your education, or homesickness like it was for me last year. Um, but this year, it's this pageant. This is what I want, and I want to glorify God through that. So um, this pageant is not about me. Um, I definitely, like I said, want to be a servant, and although I am Miss Twin Cities, although I could potentially be Miss Virginia, that's not my identity, and my identity is through Christ, and the same for Abby. So just please keep us in your prayers this week and this weekend, and I'm going to welcome my beautiful new friend, Abby Long. Thanks, Alexis. Hi, everyone. I want to first take <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> I want to first take this opportunity to thank Pastor David and Pastor Josh and their team for the opportunity to be here today. <laughs> guys, this is incredible. Just look around for a second. We are so blessed to be a part of this. For those who don't know me personally, I give tours at the Visitor Center. Shout out to the President's Box up there. <laughs> And through that, I am so thankful to have the opportunity to meet students from the country and the world and to see their passions and their dreams and how the Lord could use them here. But more than that, I'm reminded every day of why we're here, of what the Lord is doing through this campus and of, of how we're growing and the exciting things happening here. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to share just a couple things that have been on my heart that the Lord has been teaching me recently. And the first and the biggest one of these is God's grace. I have seen this semester more than ever before the power of God's grace through, through everything. In the bad things that we don't do, in the good things that we do, it is all by God's power and through His grace and for His glory. And I know that is the prayer of both Alexis and myself through this, this opportunity that's come our way that God is glorified because no title, no position, nothing matters if it's not for God's glory. And so it is our prayer that everything we do may be through His power, by His Spirit, and for His glory. And the other thing I've, that's really been on my heart that I've been learning is to live by genuine passion. Each and every one of us, each and every one of you is created with such a unique set of talents and of skills and of abilities, and we have so many opportunities to put those into place, especially here at Liberty. We are surrounded by a crazy opportunity like no other time in our lives. And if we can just take hold of those opportunities and find that sweet spot of those God-given passions and talents and pursue those opportunities He gives us to use them, that's when we find what we were created to do. And that's when we can shine for Christ. And so, guys, you are the most incredible student body on the earth. I am so thankful, so thankful and so blessed to be a part of it. 
And it is my hope and prayer that in everything that we do, may it be less of us and more of Christ. May it be all by his power, through his grace, and for his glory. Thank you guys, I love you. for Friday's win against Karen University. Sweet. Okay, we're gonna need a lot more of you to come out tomorrow, Tuesday night, against VCU. They have been a nationally ranked team, so we'd like to see you all come out and support. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ellie, and I'm just a student, just like you guys. Um, the only difference between me and you is that my parents decided to actually follow me to college um, as a sophomore year. Um, I was a little hesitant to introduce today's speaker because last time I made a good, good father joke and it didn't go off too well. Um, so if you hadn't already told um, my dad's the speaker for today, um, I wasn't always too excited about him being here. In fact, he will tell you that when he decided to accept the job my sophomore year, he called me the night before um, he was going to make the announcement that he was going to be the coach here. And he said, Ellie, my press conference is tomorrow. I'm thinking about taking the job at Liberty. And I said, Liberty, as in my school. He said, yeah. And I said, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> no way. Um, if you do that, I'll organize a peaceful protest outside, picket signs and everything, not my coach. I decided that wasn't too good of an idea, considering he could stand outside the mosque with a sign that said, not my tuition bill. So, <laughs> probably wise of me not to do that in retrospect. Um, but in all honesty, I'm so happy my dad and my family are here now. He um, is not only an incredible coach, he's got an impressive resume for you, those of you who may or may not know him, um, but he is even greater of a man. Um, he's a wonderful discipler and counselor to many. Um, I think his players would say the same thing. Um, not only have I seen him from the time I was three have players over for dinner to our house, but I'm 22 now and he still has people in there and is discipling them um, in his office day after day and um, is walking through sermons with them or giving dating advice. So he's so much more than a basketball coach. He's more of a mentor and a counselor. And for that, I'm so grateful to see him. He has a passion for people our age and um, it's really incredible to see him at work I get to every day. Um, so can we give a warm welcome for my dad and um, just an incredible spiritual leader, Coach McKay? Thank you, Presh. It's a long introduction. Um, I've got some pictures of my daughter. If we can put those on the screen. Um, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was her with her pigtails. I think she's like three or four, and that's her first day of kindergarten. You know, I like little Ellie sometimes better than big Ellie because big Ellie has a credit card. <laughs> and, uh, but she is, she is a wonderful blessing to me and her mother. 
Um, whenever, I'm so proud of her because whenever she comes into a room, her name means light. And uh, that girl, she brings out the best in people. So thank you. Love you. Um, I want to show you the rest of my family. We've got two boys, Luke and Gabriel. Luke's on the far right. We call him Champ. Uh, he's a champion, servant. The, the, the young man would give the shirt off his back. He, I, I love him. I think he's got the sweetest spirit in the world. He's here today. Luke, raise your hand. Thanks, Luke. Luke wants no attention, so will you give it up for Luke? Thanks. And then uh, my youngest, he unfortunately gets uh, called a mini-me. He's got an unbelievable leadership gift on his life. Uh, his name is Gabriel, and he won't be shy. He'll probably stand up and start doing some kind of moves. Gabriel? <laughs> And then most of you, especially you guys, you notice the, the young lady in there that also looks like a daughter of mine. I got all the jokes. I, I hear them all the time. You, but you can see, that's my wife, Julie, if you put that up one more time, in the middle. And uh, I know, I know, it's just proof that God is the God of upsets. And uh, I got a major one there, but she's, uh, she's been my wife for 26 years and uh, can't tell you enough. I can't tell you enough how much she's blessed my life and inspired me. So thank you, honey. Will you? Just thank you. All right. Another group I want to introduce you to is uh, our basketball team, 2016-17 Liberty Flames. Will you give it up for them? Uh, not only our players, but our, our coaching staff and support staff. Um, this is a group that has uncommon character. And I mean that with all sincerity. I've done this for 28 years, and I've never been around a group of people like this. So much so that uh, I've decided to trust not only God with my life, but trust them. I've never been as vulnerable with a team. And uh, these men, although you may know them and you know they're not perfect, you know what I do love about them? They're pursuing. They want to be a part of this body. They, they want to glorify the mission of this university. And uh, fellas, I'm thankful for you. Uh, one more time, will you stand up and wave and thank you. All right, I'd be, I'd be disingenuous if I didn't tell you I'm, I'm, uh, I feel way underqualified for this. Uh, there are so many out there that could do a much better job than me, um, but I, I don't forsake or take lightly uh, the privilege of speaking before you. And I'm not here to preach to you, I just want to share a little bit about what God's done in my life. And uh, I, I honestly said, like, I think it was Abby that said, this is the best student body in the world. I, I mean that sincerely. Go ahead and give it up for yourselves. You know, we're, we're at a university that's under great leadership. Uh, Jerry Jr. is not here. Yeah, I love it when you guys do the Jerry Jr. thing. Will you do that just in his absence? Go ahead. Jerry. I love that. Did you see him? My man is so authentic. Did you see him when, I can't remember who it was that gave the $2 million check, and he kind of interrupted David, and, and he, then he started showing people the check? <laughs> Love that. Um, David obviously would choose today to miss. I think he's speaking somewhere else, and one of the apprehensions I had with this, other than being underqualified, was being subject to, or the subject of yik yak. Um, but I don't wear skinny jeans, and uh, so. So we're just gonna do a couple of things today. First, I'm gonna tell you a quick story, then we're gonna watch a video, then uh, I'm gonna send you a text message, and then we're gonna close with a song. So first, the, the story. I don't know about you, but have, have any of you ever been jammed up or felt discouraged, uh, disappointed, um, disenchanted, a little hopeless, twisted up? Well, I'm going to propose that if you've ever felt like that, and I know you have, it's usually the result of one of three things. So follow me here. If you want to get out your phone, and, and these are really short points. Um, they're usually the result of one of three things. Number one our own sin. Number two, other people's sin against us. And number three, unmet expectations. It's usually one of those three things, our own sin. 
You know, I, had a, I have a mentor that has, uh, has walked me through this Christian life, and he's been fabulous in his example. He said to me one time, he said, we usually replace a feeling, listen to me now, we usually replace a feeling that we don't want to feel with sin. We usually replace a feeling that we don't want to feel with sin. And I can remember as a, as a basketball player, as a coach, whenever we lost, whenever I felt like I didn't measure up, uh, my dad and mom got divorced and my dad moved out and uh, my mom remarried four times. So uh, those stepdads had no chance with me. And, and I just remember always being discouraged by them, but always trying to perform for my dad. And when I didn't play well, when I, didn't, when I wasn't the best player on the floor, when we didn't win the game, I would sometimes replace that feeling of not measuring up with sin. And it can look a lot of different ways for you than it did for me. Um, it, it could be, it, well, you know what it could be. Uh, the second one is uh, how we get jammed up is uh, by other people's sin against us other people's sin against us. And look, there's a lot of people in this room, in this building, and some of you have gone through way more than maybe you should have, and it's not your fault. Somebody said something, did something, violated you in some way that has got you twisted up. And we, we get twisted up when we get jammed up, we're wounded. And we end up walking around with wounds that are big, that are grand. And something will happen and it triggers the bleeding again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it up. But the third thing is unmet expectations. Uh, can I give you a quick story? We played Karen University last night, and I, I love this team. I think we're really, we got a chance to be good. I don't know if we'll win tomorrow night. If the, the building looks like this, I'll guarantee it. But no, some of you might know someone at VCU. Take that out. Um, but I have high expectations of them. And Friday night, I was mad. Who was at the game? So Friday night, I was mad. I, was I mad, fellas? Yeah, I, I was mad. We weren't playing great. We were up like four with three minutes to go in the half. We were supposed to beat this team badly. And I, they had a guy score 30 points or 29 points against us. So my unmet expectations triggered a reaction. It was anger. It was, it was disappointment. I was, I was mad. But I've learned not to replace a feeling that I don't want to feel with sin. So before I show you the video, I, I just want you to go here with me. I want you to go here with me. It is such a challenge at this place, at this school. I was here before um, 2007 and 8, 8 and 9 and uh, left for University of Virginia, coached there with Coach Bennett for six years, and then I came back. And I was, we had some success at Virginia. I had a few different opportunities, but I was so excited when our athletic director, Jeff Barber, called me and asked me to come back. Because this place is special. It really is, it's unique. There's a unique culture here. But you know what? There's also some masking there's some hiding. There's some, it's what we do. Sometimes as believers, we, we don't want people to know that we're hurting. We, just this weekend, we may, have, we may have done something that we're ashamed of. And we get stuck in trying to, in trying to fix it ourselves. We run around with these masks on. We talk Christianese, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, great, brother. When we're dying inside, when we need to be rescued, the triggers are our sin, other people's sin against us, and our unmet expectations. So as a result of that, I want you to see this video. My son came, God was doing something in my life, teaching me his grace, and just like the children of Israel who got freed uh, spent 40 years wandering. I, I spent a few years wandering myself, and although I was still a believer, still listening to God's Word trying to grow, I didn't have this 
I didn't master the message yet. And Steve Jobs, in his seven secrets to success, he's got, it's, it's laced with biblical scripture, although he had nothing to do with God speaking through him. Number seven is master the message. And I'd like you to take a look at this video, and then we're going to send you a text. There's only one, and he's the one that took your place. He's the one that stood silently on the platform with Pilate and said, yes, let him have Barabbas. Take me. How many times have I stood on that platform with Pilate and Jesus, and I'm the Barabbas, and they start to take my chains off, and I say, no, no, I deserve this. I deserve the guilt. I deserve the shame. I deserve the consequence. I deserve it. Jesus seems to look at me, say, no, son, let me have it. Let me have your sin. Let me have your pain. No, God, I did it to myself. I deserve it. My marriage won't make it. This is what I deserve. I deserve divorce. I deserve poverty. I deserve sickness. I deserve it all. No. So shame, give me your shame. But God, what if I do it again? I'll still be here. Oh God, I don't want to hurt you. I love you. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Give me your sins, son. This is all we got. It's all I got, it's all you got. We can play games, we can play church games. We can pretend like some people are better than others and that's why they're blessed. Or we can all come to the honest conclusion that it's God. And it's God alone. The greatest challenge is not your discipline, your devotion, your focus. Your greatest challenge is believe in the gospel. Could it be that there's a God with a love so scandalous so wide, so deep, so vast, so high, so expansive, so welcoming, so inclusive. Let me have your sin, son. Okay. When I give him my sin, I stand in this empty space of forgiveness and acceptance while Jesus walks off to the cross that I deserve. I see him, I see him walking to the post to be whipped. As I stand a free man, all the attention is turned now. And I feel the love of God saying, go son, live your life. I'll pay the price. Where did we get off thinking that we were gonna set ourselves free? It's still Jesus. It'll always be Jesus. It'll never stop being the power of Jesus. If his blood is sufficient for your salvation, his blood is sufficient to sustain you through every challenge and every sin and every temptation. Jesus is enough. So if you, if you haven't seen that before, that's Judah Smith who passes a church in Seattle, City Church, where uh, my brother-in-law actually attends. And that, uh, that's a story about Barabbas. And I don't know about you, but, uh, but I can really identify with that. Um, there's a text message that I'm going to read to you. Um, you should be getting it on your phone. You can go ahead and put it up. If you, if you want it, I think you can text COACH at 24502. Um, I didn't think of that. They did. Um, and, and I want you to, I really want you to press in because look, I still watch that video. I got it about four years ago from my son. And, and I still watch it probably once a week. Because when he says in there, let me have your sin, son. Let, let me have your shame. Man, I need that. I need to trust God with being able to do what his word says. So here's the... Here's the message that I wanted to give. This came from my devotional. It's the only 
It's the only thing that I'm going to read to you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll close with a song. It says, it's simply a denial of the amazing grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ to treat yourself as an unworthy, impure, and incapable spiritual worm. You must not meditate on the judgment of God. You must not squirm at the thought of His presence. You must not allow yourself to wonder if He loves you. You must not see yourself as unworthy of His care. You must not work to measure up in His sight. You must not think that He acts more favorably, <clears throat> more favorably to you when you are obedient than when you sin. You must not beat yourself up when you fail. You must not give in to acts of payment or penance. After you've messed up in God's eyes, you must not envy the worthiness of the person next to you because he or she is more spiritually mature. You must never run from God in fear. Man, I'm guilty of all those. And I've got a daughter your age, boys your ages, and a team of players that I kind of get to see what you go through on a regular basis. And these things right here, these things are weapons for comparison. Remember the picture I showed you of my family? That was like the eighth take. Everybody smiling. I was mad. We, we were going to a restaurant. I was hungry. Like my wife said, oh, no, no, let's get another one. I was jammed up. And we'll sit there and we'll compare other people's highlight tapes, their scissor reels to our lives. And we'll think they're inadequate. And we'll think, man, we can't measure up or God can't use me like he's using someone else. Don't buy that lie. The enemy is always going to whisper to you, you're not pretty enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not good enough, you're a failure. Oh, if they only knew what you did on Saturday night. That's not the God that we serve. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 9, that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I asked uh, this worship team, will you give it up for them because they are incredibly talented. There was a song that I heard the other day that I knew I was supposed to share with you. I knew it. I even played it at my home yesterday and, and I played it in our practice gym last night and God confirmed it when one of our players, and we got players from all over. We got a player from Taiwan, a player from Puerto Rico, a player from Seneca, South Carolina that's just like another foreign country. We got, we got players from all over and they listen to different music. But I heard one of my players singing the words of this song and I said, I knew it. I knew God that you guys are supposed to hear this. So Jimmy's gonna lead us out. And, and I, will you quiet yourself for a minute? No, no, seriously. Wherever you are, whether you're standing up in the back, whether you're in your seat and on your phone, just put it down for one minute. Just, just put it down for one minute. And stop feeling condemned. Get untwist, untwisted. Master the message. God speaks to me sometimes through song. Let him speak to you. <laughs>